Hello, it's Mr. Eve Cheese. And I'm Zabacat. And this is our review of the Hot Toys Star Wars Mandalorian IG-11 6 scale action figure. And there's the package. You look pretty cool there. This is what I wasn't sure about getting earlier. I mean, a while ago. I wanted an IG-88 for a long time. But then I started thinking, he's hard to get now. IG-88 is hard to get, but you can still get IG-11, and you see IG-11 a hell of a lot more, and I like him a lot more, because I got to know him a little bit, whereas IG-88, he's cool because he's one of the, the bounty hunters. And they're very similar. Yeah, <laughs> so I thought, oh, let's get this one. Makes sense, and then you can stick him with Mando. I kind of encouraged you to get him a little bit, too. Yeah, not a whole lot to look at on the box. Well... It is cool they're adding these little things, but they... It's pictures of the figure. Well, let's open them up. It's kind of good that we didn't already have IG-88, because then we might have been like, well, I don't know if I should buy another one that's the same thing. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have. But I like this one way more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like the character. So it's got the shoebox style, like most of the black, or most of the Star Wars figures have. Oh. The Black Series. <laughs> Hot Toys Black Series. And then this was in there, but popped out. You can see the nice picture. The figure there. Looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, pull that out. There he is, hidden behind a bunch of plastic. And I think there's only one layer here. Yeah, he's got his base back there. I don't think there's a another layer underneath. So, let's get him out of there. So there he is, opened up. And he is really cool looking. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. I was playing around with him and the, the scrunchy things around his joints make me real happy. <laughs> he looks like a walking pile of junk. And I like that. That's what he's supposed to look like. <laughs> and we've got six batteries for his light up parts. We've got a big blaster rifle. A smaller stormtrooper looking blaster. His little band of the ears, and the alternate thing for his little self-destruct thing that he uses to do things. What kind of things? <laughs> the self-destruct! <laughs> <laughs> and he's also got his base back there, which we already put together, which I don't think that was necessary to show. Yeah, the thing pops into the thing. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> The thing pops into the thing, just like this thing pops into the thing when you take the other thing out, so he can do his thing. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, I guess we'll look at him real quick before we stick the bandoliers on, just to see, so you can see his chest and parts a little better. But... Some of him actually is real metal. But not all of it. It's kind of hard to tell. Like, this right here is definitely metal. This piece... In the front, little rectangular pieces of metal, and in the back. But then a lot of this is plastic. Most of what I'm touching now is plastic. Plastic. It's all plastic. So, I mean, there's just a few pieces, which I don't know why, it's just a few random pieces they did that with. But, it's cool. That really looks rusty. It does seem like, with the way that he's shaped, if it was all metal, it would be hard to balance him. Probably. Without tipping over. Mm-hmm. He seems like a very impractical design robot, but when you see him moving the Mandalorian, then you see how good he can work based on his movements. <laughs> Flying yeah. around, killing everything in sight. And he's got all these little things. They look like they could break easy if you dropped them. Let's drop them and see. <laughs> Test it out! But yeah, these aren't metal. These little things here, this is plastic. It feels kind of fragile. So he, he does seem like he has some fragile parts. This, this is not metal, feels pretty fragile. These little canisters, the little wires in it, also seem like maybe they could break if he fell. He's very sturdy, luckily. He's got these big flat feet, and he stands up pretty well, plus he's got the base, so... You shouldn't drop him, which means we'll probably drop him in this video by accident. Yeah, I'm really liking his... Design it's pretty damn cool. The little butt spike is weird. Yeah, I don't know Who what put the... that in the design. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's his. Never mind. Then <laughs> <laughs> getting into robot stuff. The robot reproduction. 
Yeah, his head looks really cool. And as probably a lot of you watching know, this was his head first appeared in A New Hope as some like the drink mixers or whatever at the, the cantina, most likely cantina. I think in a way it works when you look back as like before they were just drink mixers or whatever and then they reused them as a, his head but then you can look back and say well they destroyed some of these guys somehow <laughs> and used their heads as drink mixers I don't know who the hell would have destroyed them for them maybe they hired Boba Fett <laughs> maybe they just found one that had self-destructed but its head was still <laughs> well, maybe. well they had several of them there were like at least like three I think just recently announced was the Black Series 6 inch scale Cantina Showdown 3 pack, which is pretty cool. Comes with the bar and you can see the little IG drink dispenser heads. So I'll probably be getting that, especially because it comes with butt mouth, as I call them. But yeah, I always thought he was cool when seeing him in Empire Strike Back. Well, I mean, not him, I mean IG 88, but still. He's basically the same guy, just slightly different. But he's just cool because it's just like he looks like a no emotion robot. It's gonna come kill you. And somewhat Terminator like. Also, kind of reminds me of the robot from Saturn 3. <laughs> to get the bandolier on, this one strap is Velcro. And then you have to take the little thing off of his head, little point. Because I was trying to get it on without looking at the directions and I couldn't get it over his head, but it shows you taking that off. So you got to do that. And you could probably force it, but that'd be risky. There we go. So there he is with the bandolier on, which is kind of cool. That's just one of the weird things that I kind of like, because you usually just think of a robot, like not counting ones that have like fake skin and stuff, but just a plain old metal robot. You don't really think of it as having leather straps and <laughs> clothes and stuff Accessories. on it. Accessories. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. Okay, so I guess we put the lights on. Got to stick the batteries in his head. Oh man, we need a damn screwdriver. <sighs> Well, you weren't anticipating that? No, I should have been, but... Alright, so there he is with the lights on his head turned on. And that spins around, so that's pretty cool. I like it. Mm, one of the creepy things. I always assume those are all little eyeballs, so you can see all around. Kind of hard to see them turned on with the lights on, but... If you look closely, you can see them glowing. Well, I mean, they look red. Just yeah. when they're not on, they don't even look red. Mm -hmm. And so we got put the batteries into his little self-destruct thingamajigger. So we gotta switch that. So. So. Uh, there's bandoliers in the way. How the hell did how do you do that with the bandolier in the way in the show? I guess it just popped out in between. I guess it does. Look, just popped right in there. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it flashes. Just like in the show. That was a pretty funny scene. He's very quick to self destruct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's cool. I like that a lot. It's a suicidal robot. The light is bright, too. I just stared mm -hmm. into it and now my eyes hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think it's way brighter than the one in his head. But that's probably because the one in his head is like further away from the surface. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty damn cool. Mm -hmm. I guess we could uh, put some guns in his hands. And all of his little fingers are move. They got a hinge, I believe, just on the hand part. They're not like knuckle hinges or anything. They're sculpted there, but they don't do nothing. Or do they? Well, that one does. Oh, never mind. All the knuckles work. <laughs> I didn't think they did. They were just really tight. So yeah, all the little joints are actually real joints. Yeah, you gotta get that top one in for the trigger. That's pretty cool. That's one thing that sucked with the Black Series one, the little one. Is they had to have a peg that went into the gun for him to hold it. But this one he can actually hold it himself with his fingers, which is really cool. I'm not sure if his 
if he has that out or in when he uses it. There he is holding his guns. That's pretty cool. It would be cool to compare this to Sideshow's IG-88 just because I bet they made it a little bit different because they usually are a little different when you compare Sideshow to Hot Toys. I know color-wise IG-88 is a lot more silver. It doesn't have all these other colors on them. No band of the ear. Or at least not one like this. I think he has like one little strap going around. Do articulation. And I may miss some because he's not a normal figure or character. But I'll try to get all the articulation. This can spin around there. This can spin around. The whole head could spin. And I don't think this goes up and down. I think that's supposed to be a joint there. But this just this doesn't actually work. I think maybe in the black series you can move it there, but I'm not sure. And then at the shoulders, it's gonna go up and down or all around really. Come out there, just rotate right there. And then at the elbow, this is all rubbery. Don't know how that'll last over time. Spin there too, yeah, it spins there too. And then uh, up here it spins. And there's a hinge. And then of course all of his knuckles on his fingers can move. And that looks pretty crazy when he has it all open like that. You can have him grabbing somebody's head. And he twists right there. And then also in the Black Series, he could lean forward. I don't think this one can do that. He could turn somewhere here. Yeah, turn down there, all the way around. But he can't lean forward like the Black Series can. But maybe he's not supposed to. Then, once again, looks like they got the rubber joint there. So they can go out about that far. Go out that far. This wire can get knocked off though, so I gotta be careful. Kind of tilt around. It's pretty good there at the hips. Um, it's got his knee, more of that rubbery joint. It seems like something should twist here, but it doesn't. Nothing seems to twist. Mm, you can twist the whole leg a little bit. Yeah. And down at the ankle, you can do that. And they could spin around there. The foot also tilts side to side too, like that. And I think that's all the articulation. But like I said, we could have missed something just because he's. It'd be very easy to hide some articulation on him. And there's IG11 next to Mando. And I say they got the heights pretty close to what they should be. He's really tall next to him. It looks cool. It really makes me think of the show looking at them together. I was super excited when he got reprogrammed and came back because I was disappointed in the first episode when he got killed. Mm-hmm. You gone already? <laughs> but then I thought the show was building up to him having Mando having a crew and IG-11 and Cara Dune and Quill would all be part of his crew. But that didn't happen. Or IG-11 didn't make, didn't survive the season. And there's a little baby Yoda. Grogu. I don't have the speeder bike or the little sack. I don't even know if that's... Or the little knapsack. What do you call it? Thing he carries him in in the front. I don't know. I don't know. Is this a satchel? I don't even know if that's out yet. I wasn't planning on getting it. I would like to have it, but that's, that's too expensive. I don't... You can just make one. Make a whole speeder bike? No, a satchel. <laughs> Well, that's what I want. You're supposed to put them on. I thought on. you just meant the satchel. No, the little speeder bike, so you can ride around on it and. Grab well, it. you could probably make that if you tried really hard. Yeah, that's too hard. <laughs> There's IG11 next to a couple other famous Star Wars droids that you may have heard of. And that's the Hot Toys R2D2 and the, and the Sideshow C3PO. Did his eyes turn off? Well, there we go. 
There they are all lit up. Yeah, Art 2D2 is really bright. Especially that one light. Yeah. It's like blinding. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to see IG-11s on camera, but you can see them in person. And there's IG-11 next to Chewbacca. I just want to see how they compare with heights. And they're pretty much the exact same size. The uh, tip of IG-11's head is a little taller, but still the heads are about at the same height. Seeing them together now, I am completely di like sure that that is just the inner skeleton of a Wookiee. <laughs> That's what's under the fur. Maybe. I mean, their heads are even a similar shape. And they like to have bandoliers with blocks on them. <laughs> yeah. That's just a skinned Wookiee. They're a, they're a robot underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so there's IG-11 next to two other scary looking murder bots. Well, I guess Ultron in that form didn't really kill anybody, but he killed people later. But he just... It was on his mind. Yeah. <laughs> They're just freaky looking robots that be scary chasing after you. All three of them. And Ultron also looks like he was made out of pile of junk. Because he was! Yeah. <laughs> Here is IG-11's base. And it's a sand base again. It's kind of disappointing because those are not his footprints. Because usually you can stick like Mando's or whoever you get feet in those footprints, but his do not match up at all. Okay, so I really like this figure. It's one of the ones where he's such an odd figure. It's just very different from reviewing a lot of the other ones just because he's a very skinny robot and his articulation is different because he's a robot. Droid, whatever. But I really like him. He looks metal for the most part. Some parts do look a little plasticky, but he's just really cool. Very detailed, nice, very nice paint, and I like his size. He's a very different figure from most of the other Star Wars figures I got. He'll stand out. And it's cool to get another figure to go along with Mando, since that's like one of my favorite things the past couple years. Mm-hmm. And it's basically just him and a couple stormtroopers right now. It's nice to have somebody who's on his side. Yeah. <laughs> well, got Grogu. Well, yeah, but he's a little tiny thing. Yeah, we got the Force. <laughs> but uh, he's really awesome. I like his bandolier, his old flashy, self-destruct thing, his light-up head, his articulated fingers are pretty cool. I really like him. I think they they did a really good job. It looks just like him. His base doesn't fit his feet for the footprints. Which yeah. that ain't a big, that big a deal. I don't really care that much about I mean, that. You probably won't even end up on the base. A lot of them aren't. Yeah. But... Yeah, this really makes me want to get Quill on a Blurg. <laughs> That's so damn expensive though. But I, I kept hoping. I'm like, I hope they make Quill with a Blurg. Because I'm getting that. And then they uh, reveal that they're making it. And then put it up for pre-order. I'm like... Oh. I never pre-ordered it. Because it's just so damn expensive. Yeah. I may still get it, but it's just like, ugh. They need to put out a whole bunch of codes again, because that's how we ended up yeah. with Jabba. <laughs> mm -hmm. They probably will. I may never get Cara Dune. Probably won't, unless she somehow comes back. But I kind of wish we had her to go with the season one group. I liked her character on the show. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting into all that crap, but I did like her character on the yeah. show. Yeah, regardless of whatever she did off screen... I liked what she did in the show. It was pretty cool. The whole time that we've been reviewing this, I've had a song stuck in my head. It's uh, Royal Blood's Boilermaker. Because in the song he says, head like a cocktail shaker. And it's, his head is shaped just like a cocktail shaker. And they used it as a drink dispenser. <laughs> he's, he's got a head like a cocktail shaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like this figure a lot. I'd say if you weren't sure you're on a fence about it, I'd say he's worth getting. He's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really glad that we got him. What? Well, we Chief Cheese. And I'm Bobby Cat. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. There is no other choice. I'm going to have to get out of this boat and into the lava and go ahead to eliminate the stormtroopers. But you'll die. Do not feel sad. I don't. Oh, I, I don't feel sad. Yes, you do.
Now I know why humans cry. What? How can you tell I'm crying under this? X-ray vision or something. Okay. Do you need me to lower you into the lava? No. Why would you need to do that? I don't know if maybe you're not able to self-destruct or self-terminate or whatever you call it. I have a self-destruct system built into me, don't you remember? Oh yeah! Forgot about that! Okay. It is now time for me to go. I have the strange urge to say, hasta la vista, baby. Mm -hmm. I thought this was deeper than this. Oh well. I will go ahead and eliminate the stormtroopers. I'm gonna miss him. I wish I could give him one last hug. Oh, he's about to self-destruct and kill the stormtroopers. He's gone. Wait! A little bit of him's left. But he's sinking into the lava. Wait, he's sticking his arm up. I think he just gave me the finger. Hey everyone, it's Clementine from The Walking Dead. And you are watching Mr. Evil Cheese and Zombie Cat. Don't be a shitbird and subscribe already. Do it. Thanks.